Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we'll be sewing a mini backpack card holder. So, let's get started. If you would like to sew along with me, I will put a link to the pattern in the description below the video. But first, let's take a look at the project. The backpacks are approximately 4 inches wide by 5 inches tall by 3 quarters of an inch deep. And they do have a swivel clip so that you can attach them to a belt loop or to the outside of another bag. There is a card slot for holding some cards. And it also is great for carrying some hand sanitizer or some lip balm. You could also throw some change in there or whatever else you need to carry with you. This is also a great project for using up scrap fabrics. The pattern does include all of your written instructions plus all the materials and notions that you will need. So we're going to skip over that part and go right into the construction. In this step, we're going to sew the front of the mini backpack together. You'll need your exterior front top and your exterior front bottom. You're simply going to place them right sides together. Make sure that all of your edges are even here and on the sides. And then you can clip them in place. And once you have this clipped in place, We'll go over to the sewing machine and sew one quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now, when I'm working on a very small project like this, I typically like to draw in my stitching line. So this line here is one quarter of an inch down from the top. I'm sewing on a Juki DX4000 QVP, also known as the Kokochi. I will be using a stitch length of 2.6 and I'm going to backstitch at both ends. And I'm just following that line that I drew in for my stitching line, and it's a one quarter of an inch seam. After stitching that seam, you want to press the seam down towards the bottom front. Then you're going to take one of the pieces of Pellon Flex Foam and zigzag stitch all the way around the perimeter. And I do instruct you to do this in the preparation section of the pattern. If you don't have access to a zigzag stitch, you can run a straight line of stitching all the way around the perimeter, and I would do two lines of stitching. And you want to stay within the one quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that's going to compress the edges of the foam to make it easier to work with. Then you'll take the foam, place it down on your work surface, and you want to place the wrong side of the front on top of the foam. And then you'll go ahead and clip those two sections together. Now we're just going to base the two pieces together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now I will baste around the perimeter one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.4 and there's no need to back stitch. Next, we're going to mark a few quilting lines on the front panel. Now, we will need to find the center of this panel, and the easiest way to do this is to use the pattern piece for the exterior back. The marks that you see here, 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 and here are the quarter marks on the pattern. So this line here at the top, and this line here at the bottom would be the center of the panel. So you can just take it and lay it down over the front and just mark where those lines are. So now I have these two marks indicating the center front of the panel. Now if you notice I am using a friction pen. I'm only using it for demonstration purposes. While this ink will disappear with heat, it can come back with cold. So always be very careful if you use one of these. 
Now that I have my marks in place, I'm just going to line those marks up with the edge of my ruler and mark one line down, but I'm stopping right here where this seam line is. And then I'm going to mark another line one inch away from that center. And then a line one inch away from the center on the other side of that line. And these are my three quilting lines for the front. So we will quilt these three lines and then we're also going to stitch right here in the ditch. I'll start the quilting by stitching in the ditch. You do want to back stitch and I will be using a stitch length of 3.4. Next I'll be stitching these three lines and I like to start over here where I began the stitch in the ditch and I do back stitch again. When I get to that first line I'm going to stop and pivot and now I will stitch right on top of that line all the way up to the top. And I'll pivot and I'm going to sew over to that second line. Pivot and sew down on the line. And then I'll pivot again. Stitch over to the last line. And pivot and stitch up to the top. And then I'll just back stitch to end it. After quilting, take the piece for the interior front lining. You want to place it wrong sides up and then you're going to place the quilted front on top of the lining so the wrong sides are together. And just clip them together and then we'll go ahead and baste these sections together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm basting one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.4 and there's no need to back stitch. Next we'll be sewing the interior card slot pocket. So take the piece that you cut out for your card slot. This is the 5 inch side. This is the 6 inch side. You want to fold it so that it's wrong sides together. And the two raw edges of the 5 inch sides should be even with each other. So that makes your card slot 5 inches wide. Next take one of the pieces that you cut out for the interior back. And you're going to place the card slot on top of that back. And you want to get it somewhat centered. And the bottom raw edge of the card slot pocket should be even with the bottom edge of the interior back. Then just flip it over, just like this, and put in a few clips to hold it in place. After it's clipped together, we're going to baste the pieces together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'll baste the card slot to the interior back with a stitch length of 3.0 and we're just going one eighth of an inch away from the edge. If you want to back stitch here a little bit, you can do that. And you just want to follow the contour of that back interior.
After basting those two pieces together, you just want to go ahead and trim away the excess pocket. Now you want to find the center of the panel and you can use your pattern piece again to do that. Using those marks, I want to draw a line down the center of the card slot. And now that I have the center marked, I want to draw a line one and an eighth inches away from each side of that center. So I can just place my ruler down and measure one and one eighth inches away from each side of that center line. And then we're going to stitch down both of these lines. So we'll be stitching on this line and this line. You will not be stitching on the center line. I'm going to stitch down those lines with a stitch length of 2.6. I will back stitch well at both ends. And then you just want to follow the line. And then you can go ahead and stitch down the line on the other side of the center. In this step, we'll be sewing the back of the mini backpack together. So you'll take the piece that you have for your exterior back and lay it on top of the other piece of Pellon Flex Foam that you cut out. And you're going to clip them together. And after you've clipped them together, you're going to base the two pieces together one eighth of an inch away from the edge, exactly the way you did before. And I'm going to go and do that off camera. After basting the exterior back to the foam, we're going to mark some quilting lines. So you want to once again find the center and go ahead and use your pattern piece to find those center marks. And just like before, we're going to use those center marks to draw a line. Always make sure that you're using an erasable tool for this. And then we're going to mark a line one inch away from each side of the center. And those will be our three quilting lines. I will be quilting each line with a stitch length of 3.4 and I am going to back stitch on each end. And then you can go ahead and stitch each line exactly the same way. After quilting the back, we're going to baste it to the piece with the interior card slot. So you'll take the piece with the card slot and have it wrong side up, and then you want to place the wrong side of the quilted back on top of the card slot piece. Then you're going to clip it together and after it's all clipped into place we'll baste the two pieces together one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. To prepare for sewing in the gusset we need to mark the quarter marks on both of these pieces and we're going to do it from the lining sides. So you'll simply take the pattern piece and transfer those quarter marks onto the fabric. And now you also will transfer the marks on the sides here. 
you're going to do this for both the front and back. And now I have my quarter marks on both pieces. So here they are on the front piece, and here they are on the back piece. In this step, we're going to sew the gusset together. The first thing that you need to do is trim your zipper down to the proper length, which will be 8.25 inches long. Now, I'm using a number 4.5 YKK zipper here. The width of the zipper tape is 1.25 inches. Right here, I have a number five zipper. And the width of the zipper tape on a number five zipper is also 1.25 inches. But if you compare it to the number 4.5 zipper, you'll see that the zipper teeth on the number five are much wider than they are on the number 4.5. I highly recommend that you use the number 4.5 zipper because it's much easier to sew these zipper teeth around the curve than it is for the wider teeth on the number five zipper. So to trim it to size, the first thing I'll do is cut the zipper off right where that zipper stop is at the end. You just want to cut it straight across. And then we're going to measure 8.25 inches up from the bottom of the zipper here. So I'm measuring up 8.25 inches and I'm just going to put a mark there. And then I'll do the same exact thing on the other side of the zipper. Then you want to pull down your zipper pull, make sure that you don't pull it all the way because you don't want to slide it off. And right where I have those two marks, I'm just going to trim. And now to prevent the zipper pull from sliding off either end, You'll want to either hand stitch over the zipper teeth here or machine sew over them. And I've already done that on this zipper here. I've secured both ends with machine stitching. And now your zipper is all set to be used. Now take the pieces that you've cut out for your gussets and you want to clip them to the zipper with the right sides together. So the right side of the gusset to the right side of the zipper and the right side of the zipper is always the side that has the zipper pull on it. So go ahead and clip one side together. And then turn the zipper over and the right side of the gusset will be facing down onto the zipper. Once you have these clip together. You'll go ahead and stitch one quarter of an inch away from this edge here. And I'm going to do that off camera. I have that first seam sewn and I used a stitch length of 2.6 and I did back stitch at both ends. Now you want to do the same thing on this end. You're going to clip the gusset to the zipper right sides together. And then you can go ahead and clip the opposite side to the zipper. 
And now go ahead and sew this end of the zipper with a one quarter inch seam. And I'm going to do that off camera. Now that I have both sides sewn here, I'm just going to take the zipper and pull it from in between the gusset. And now we have a little ring. The two gusset pieces are now wrong sides together. Just like that. You want to go ahead and pin the edges or clip the edges of the gusset together with the wrong sides together down both sides. And once you have them clipped, you want to go ahead and top stitch the two layers of the gussets together one eighth of an inch away from the edge. We're also going to go ahead and top stitch one quarter of an inch away from this edge right here. I'm going to start basting the two layers of the gusset together one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I'm going to use a stitch length of 2.6. There's no need to back stitch. Now when I get close to this seam right here, I want to stop about a quarter of an inch away from the seam. You could do an eighth of an inch away from it too if you like. It's really up to you. And then I'm going to pivot and just sew straight across. Now that I'm one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the gusset, I'll pivot again and base down the side of the gusset. Then as I approach this seam, I'll stop about a quarter of an inch away and pivot again. I'm going to go just a tiny bit more. And now I'll sew right across the zipper there, the top stitch. And pivot and finish my basting. In this step, we're going to be sewing the bias binding. So you want to take the two strips that you've already cut out for your bias binding, and you want to fold each strip wrong sides together along the raw edge, the two long raw edges. And you want to make sure that those raw edges are nice and even, and then you'll give it a good pressing. Then you'll do the same exact thing with the second piece of bias binding. Once you have that done, you're going to take the binding, and open it up and clip the two short ends together. And once you have it clipped, we're going to sew the short ends together with a one quarter of an inch seam. And I'm going to use a stitch length of 2.6 and I will do that off camera. And you need to do the same thing to both binding pieces. After sewing the short ends together, Go ahead and iron open up those seams and then you can refold the bias binding back in half with the wrong sides together. And you'll do this to both pieces of binding. So now you have a little circle of binding. In this step we're going to be sewing the bias binding to the gusset. So the first thing that I do is take the gusset piece here and I flip it so that the wrong side of the zipper is facing up. And then you want to go ahead and take one of your bias binding pieces and we're going to clip this to the wrong side of the gusset. So I'll just place the gusset inside that ring of bias binding. And you want to clip the raw edges together. You'll just clip this all around in a circle. Be careful not to stretch your bias binding. So 
So now you should have your bias binding on the outside layer. You should be pinned to the wrong side of the zipper. You want to baste all around this circle one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now I'm basting the bias binding to the gusset one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I'm using a stitch length of 2.6 and you don't need to back stitch. When you approach the zipper pull, just make sure that it's out of the way so that you don't accidentally sew over it. After the bias binding is basted to the gusset, you want to go ahead and pull that binding away from the gusset. So this is what it should look like now. Now you're going to go ahead and take your second bias binding piece and it's going to be clipped to this side of the gusset. So you'll go ahead and clip that in place just like you did before. Remember that you're clipping to the wrong side, okay? So this is the right side where the zipper pull is right here. So you want to clip that bias binding to the wrong side of the gusset here. I have the bias binding all clipped into place on the other side of the gusset. Here's the right side of the zipper right here. The bias binding is clipped to the wrong side of the zipper here. And this is what it looks like. You want to make sure that you pull this binding away from the zipper as you sew so that it doesn't get accidentally caught in your seam. And then you're going to baste one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Here's the gusset with the bias binding sewn on both sides. And this is a view from the wrong side of the zipper. And this is what it looks like from the right side of the zipper. Now we need to find the quarter marks on the gusset so that we can properly attach the gusset to the, both the back and the front of the backpack. These side seams right here, that is the quarter mark for the gusset on the side. So we can place those two seams together and put a little pin in there to hold it in place. And you want to do this with the binding folded against the zipper. Then you're going to stretch this out in both directions. And you're going to place a couple of more pins. So right here on this end, this will be the quarter mark for the bottom of the backpack. And then if I stretch it out again in this direction, this is going to be the quarter mark for the top of the backpack. Okay, and then I'm just going to release this pin here and I'm going to tuck the binding back up against the zipper again or back up against the gusset again and I'm going to match the side seams on this side here. Put a pin to hold it in place and then again we're going to stretch it out in both directions And I'll put a pin on this end to indicate the bottom of the gusset. And stretch it out. And put a pin here to mark the top of the gusset.
I'm going to release this pin again. And then what I actually like to do is just take a marking tool and place the mark right where that pin is. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. And you want to mark on the side of the bias binding. So now I have the quarter marks on my bias binding for the top and the bottom of the gusset. And again, these seams right here will be the quarter marks for the side. In this step, we're going to be sewing the gusset to the mini backpack front. So you want to have the mini backpack front on your work surface with the exterior side facing up. I've also gone ahead and put in pins for all my quarter marks just to help you see a little bit easier what I'm doing. Then you'll go ahead and you'll take your gusset. Now you need to have the gusset oriented just like this with the wrong side of the zipper facing up. You also want the zipper to be completely open and the zipper pull needs to be on the right side of the gusset. So if the gusset is going in this way you need to have the zipper pull on the right side. Now for the bias bindings, you want the bias binding on this side to be pulled out just like you see it here, but on this side you want to fold the bias binding back onto the gusset just like this. So now this is what it should look like. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some pins in my quarter marks also to help you see it a little bit easier. So this pin right here is the top of the gusset. And then I'll put another one in here. And that pin is for the bottom of the gusset. Now remember that the seams right here are the quarter marks for the side of the mini backpack. So the next thing that we're going to do is match up all the quarter marks on the gusset with the quarter marks on the mini backpack front. So I'll start with the one on the top. I'll just match up those two points and I'll pin them together. And I am pinning from the bias binding side. Now let me say this, you might want to use Wonder Clips to pin in your gusset but I'm going to tell you they're not going to hold very well, especially when you're sewing around those curves. I find that if I use some short glass head pins, it holds wonderfully and I don't have any issues with anything slipping as I'm sewing. So now we have the top one in. I'm just going to turn it around and now I'm going to match up the quarter marks on the bottom. And I'll pin that in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and match up the quarter marks on the two sides. And again, this side seam right here, that's the quarter mark on the gusset. So just match it up with the quarter mark on the side of the front and pin. And then we'll switch it around this way and do exactly the same thing. Matching up the side right there where the seam is with the side of the front and I'm just going to pin it in place. So now you should have all the quarter marks on the gusset matched up with all the quarter marks on the mini backpack front. And then all I'm going to do next is start pinning all the way around. Now you want to make very sure that your edges are all even. So the edge of the gusset should be even with the edge of the backpack front. To go around your curves you're just going to round the whole piece around your finger like this and that's going to help ease the gusset into the backpack front. So again just round it around your fingers, make sure that your edges are even and then pin in place. 
and you're going to pin like this all the way around the front. And this side here, this is just going to get tucked down as you sew around. The most important thing is to make sure that those edges are even and that you're rounding everything around your finger as you go. And put in as many pins as you need. It's really not difficult to do. You just take your time. Now that you're done pinning, we're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew completely around with a one quarter of an inch seam. If you want, you can put a little pin right in here to hold the gusset down as you sew. I'm going to start sewing in the gusset. I will be stitching with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch. You are going to sew with the binding side facing up. You can backstitch here a little bit if you want to. And you never sew over pins, so you take the pin out before you get to the pin. And you're just going to go slowly. You can see those pins really do hold everything very well in place. I don't have the gusset trying to pull away from the front of the backpack, which can happen when you're using the Wonder Clips. So just take your time and go slow, especially around those curves. I was close to the pin on that one, but I didn't actually hit it. I'm just stopping a few stitches before I get to the pin. Now I'm getting near my zipper pull and I'm going to actually pull it up out of the way a bit so that my presser foot can easily go past it. Thank you. 
And when you get back to where you started, you can go ahead and backstitch again a little bit. After you're done sewing in the gusset, you're just going to go ahead and inspect the seam all the way around from both sides. You want to make sure that you caught everything in the seam line. Once you're satisfied that everything is sewn correctly, you're going to take the binding here and you're going to pull it away from the gusset on the side that you just sewed. Just like this. Then you'll go ahead and the folded edge of the binding is going to get rolled around. You want the folded edge of the binding to be covering your seam line. And then you can go ahead and clip the binding in place with Wonder Clips. Now you have two options for sewing the binding in place. You can either hand sew it or machine sew it. I always prefer hand sewing. But if you do decide to sew this binding down by machine, what I suggest is that you sew it from this side here and that you stitch right in the ditch. So you'd be stitching right in the ditch, right along here, all the way around. I'm never happy with the result that I get when I do that. I'm not the best at sewing down binding by machine, but you could do it however you prefer. And your binding should ease in very nicely all the way around because it is a bias binding. And here's the binding all clipped into place. And this is what it looks like from the other side. So now either go ahead and machine or hand sew it in place, whatever your preference is. I am going to sew mine off camera and you do want to sew down the binding before you go ahead and sew in the back of the backpack. In this step, we'll be sewing the swivel clip tab. So you want to take the little piece of fabric that you cut out for the tab and you're going to fold it in half. Make sure that these raw edges are together. And then you're going to press that in place. Then open it up. And you want to take these two longer raw edges and fold them into the center. And then again, you'll press that in place. And then the last thing that you're going to do is bring the two long folded edges together and press in place. Once you have that done, you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from each long edge here. And I'm going to go and do that off camera and I'll use a stitch length of 2.6. After you do the top stitching, you'll take the tab and slip it onto the D-ring part of the swivel clip. And then you're going to go ahead and baste these two short raw edges together. And I'll do that off camera. Take the tab and you want to pin it to the exterior side of the backpack back. Now you can decide how long you want your tab to be. I generally don't want it to be this long. So I just move it up maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half inch. It's totally up to you. And then I'll just pin it in place. And then I'm going to baste that tab to the back of the backpack. And I'll do that off camera. And then lastly, we're just going to trim off the excess tab. In this step, we're sewing the gusset to the mini backpack back. So here is the gusset sewn into the front. And this is what it should look like right now. And the binding has been hand stitched down to the interior of the backpack. Now, once again, you want to have your zipper fully open. The zipper pull is still on the right side here. The first thing that you want to do is take this binding, fold it back over the gusset. Just like this. So this is what it should look like now. And then I'm going to take a couple of pins and put them in where the quarter marks are. This is just so that's a little bit easier for you to see it on the camera.
Then once again, you'll take the back of the backpack. I've already put the pins in on the quarter marks here. So the right side of the back is going to get pinned to the right side of the gusset. And this is the right side of the gusset right in here. And the first thing that we'll do is match up all the quarter marks just like we did before. Remember the side seam here is the quarter mark for the gusset. You'll do the bottom one. And the last one here on the side. After you've matched up all of the quarter marks on both the back and the gusset, we're going to start pinning all the way around. And I do like to turn it over and pin from the gusset side. So I have the binding facing up here and I'm pinning from this side. You want to make sure that all of those raw edges are even and round everything right around your fingers to help ease that gusset in place. So go ahead and pin all the way around and then we'll sew this together at the sewing machine. Here's the gusset pinned into the back of the backpack. And we're going to sew this with the back of the backpack on the bed of the machine. And we're going to sew all the way around with a one quarter inch seam. As you sew, you'll just be pushing the front of the backpack out of the way as you sew along. I'm going to use a stitch length of 3.0 and the seam allowance is one quarter of an inch. You just want to push the front of the backpack out of the way as you sew along and you can backstitch if you like. And remember, don't sew over pins, so you want to take your pins out right before you get to them. And just go slowly around the curves. As you get to the swivel clip, just make sure that it's out of the way. You don't want to accidentally sew over that.
when you get back to where you started just go over that previous line of stitching a little bit and then just back stitch after sewing in the back just go ahead and check your seams make sure that everything looks good once you're satisfied with that you can take the binding and you're going to fold it over towards the back just like you did for the front and then you'll start clipping that binding down in place and then you can either finish this off by hand stitching or machine stitching the binding down. After you sew down your binding, you're just going to go ahead and turn everything right side out. I like to test my zipper out a few times. And there you go. And here is the mini backpack all completed. As you can see, I've made quite a few of them so far. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. And again, I will put a link in the description below the video for the pattern. I want to thank everyone who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I really would love to have you as one. I'd also love to see you over at my Facebook page, which is Rosie and David Patterns. Thanks for watching.